Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in to the Financial Investor Channel. My name is Brent and today we're going to be doing our 5 stocks of the ex-dividends next week. So I've already gone over to Dividend.com and did my ex-dividend search. I'm looking for dates February 26th through March 2nd. We are on the very last week of February, so two week or two months down in 2018. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be adding all of our stocks here that are rated at a 3.9 through a 3.4, so Nike being the last one. Now these are all rated using the DAR system which measures the dividend stocks next four quarters, whether they're looking to be profitable. It looks at their dividend increases over the last few years. Do they have a reputable, um, do they increase their dividend year over year over year over year you know Johnson and Johnson's one of those I believe it's been paying out dividends for 43 years so it's going to be rated very nicely same with Bank of Hawaii and such it also takes a look at um, the percentage increase when they increase their dividend by how much do they increase their dividend and it matches a few other statistics and such so that's what the rating is from now anything below a 3.3 is considered neutral or you know, not exactly a buy or a sell, it's just sort of in the middle. So we're going to be including all of our 3.9 through 3.4 stocks into Y charts. So I do have a video displaying how you guys can access Y charts for free. So if you guys would like, uh, up at the top right corner, you can click on the link and check out that video right after that one. So all I'm going to do here is begin entering the ticker symbols over on Y charts because that's how we're going to be screening these stocks. We're going to be taking a look first at what stocks have a price to earnings greater than 25. So we don't want anything greater than what the S&P 500 is currently trading at because if that thing crashes and our whole market crashes, it's nice that our stock is not going to come tumbling down too hard. You know, it might fall 10, 20, 30 percent, but if you're trading at a price to earnings at around 20, 25 or less, or, you know, even nine, a lot of times those stocks are not going to be unprofitable. Let's see, we left off here at Sun. So let's move here down a little bit and now we can start with WCN. So that's why I like to have a, you know, price PE ratio around 25 or lower. Anything lower is, you know, nice so there's quite a few names in here that I can recognize we had Johnson and Johnson's we had lock uh, Goldman Sachs we have um, a few others in there hold on I can't think of the names as I'm seeing the ticker symbols it's popping other names into my head besides the one that I'm even thinking of so we have Merck um, McCallicker there we go and then PII BWA JKHW, never heard of Jack Henry Associates, so that's a funny one. We have Triple L, looks like a communications, SAFT, AJG. So quite a few names here that I do not recognize, which is why I do these five stocks that X7 is next week. It's nice to get some exposure to stocks that are not always on the headlines. I like to look out for stocks that could be potential buys, but nobody's talking about them because they're not brand names. So a lot of times, have you ever heard of Principal Financial Group? More than likely, a lot of people out there are never going to have heard of it. Whereas, if have you heard of Procter & Gamble? Yes, you've heard of Procter & Gamble. You've heard of the craziness that's been going on with their whole Tide Challenge. So, And then we have Nike there, which is our last one. So... We do have Coca-Cola, CCE, which is our Coca-Cola Enterprises here, and then it kind of goes on from there. So we're not going to include those. We already have a ginormous list here to kind of cover and thin down now. So now that we have our strongest stocks picked out for next week, we, we picked out all the stocks that have a rating of 3.4 or higher. So the next step here is I take about 10 of them, and what I'm going to be doing is look at their P.E. ratio and I'm going to be removing stocks that have a PE ratio less than 25 so that's my first step so we're looking at percentages right now so I'm going to go ahead and go like this now Johnson & Johnson here they had a weird last quarter 
If I go over to Morningstar and look at their financials for Johnson & Johnson, it's actually trading right now at a 23.2, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it in my list. Whereas if we look at Great Plains Energy, which is ticker symbol GXP, GXP. So some of these stocks, the information is correct. See, that's 169.6. This is showing 156.84. So Great Plains Energy, that one can just be removed. I'm not going to even bother. So we still have a few other ones. Lockheed Barton, while it's a great stock, defensive stock, the price earning right now is very high. So it would be considered, you know, um, over, over um, too high. I cannot think of the word right now. Having brain farts. See, we have Pepsi in the list here, but a PE ratio of 32. So that's going to leave us with a, you know, these stocks here are going to have a price to earnings less than 25. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my next group. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this for the remainder of these stocks. And then afterwards, I will be right back, okay? Okay, so we thinned down our list. All of these stocks have a PE less than 25 besides Johnson & Johnson, which we verified is does have a PE less than 25. It's at a 23.2. So next step is to remove yields, stocks that have a yield less than two. You know, one, you know, for every hundred dollars, you would only get one dollar back in that yield. So I don't want to bother looking for stocks. You know, we're in a down, you know, we just came out of a correction where stocks fell 10% at least. So some of these stocks that have a yield of zero you know anything less than two you don't want to be getting anything less than two bucks for every hundred dollars that you're investing I mean if you think the stock is great that's one thing and it has growth but if we're gonna be buying and holding for the long term we want that dividend increase I don't know which one I just removed but there we go we have L3 here so now all we're doing is just kinda of thinning it down so we're gonna be getting stocks that have yields greater than two so this is really going to thin it down here, really all the way down here on all states. So now we are left with a few stocks here that all have yields greater than two. So, so what are we down to? We have two, four, six, eight stocks. So next thing we're going to be looking for is increasing net income, revenue, and free cash flow is one that I like to look for. But net income and revenue is always nice to have. Uh, decreasing free cash flow could just mean that they've gone through some acquisitions so here Johnson & Johnson the reason that they had such a high PE ratio is maybe during their last quarter that it was reported their earnings dropped or it wasn't really reported on this website correctly so here this would have to do some double checking I do not believe Johnson & Johnson would have fell you know that fast in their last let's remove the so they would have had to have gone from 18 billion dollars in net income to 1.3 so I don't think this is correct here so I'm gonna go ahead and just leave Johnson & Johnson I'm gonna go ahead and continue to include it in my list now I'm gonna go back here and do percentage wise so we have decreasing net income decreasing revenue over the last 10 years so Bank of Hawaii can be out Kellogg's is up in revenue you know it stays up pretty decent in revenue their net income has had some spikes but they look to be coming back and the free cash flow is positive so we'll go ahead and leave them Dominion Energy over the last 10 years Let's see where are they losing out on so here their free cash flow is down utility company utility companies they do a lot of acquisitions they buy stuff so uh, their revenue is down 22 percent if we remove their free cash flow and put in their net income so They've probably gone through different acquisitions, which is why their free cash flow is down. But those acquisitions match up. So with their, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't let me pop it in. So here, you can see these decreases in free cash flow, and then spikes back up, decreases, spikes back up. And if we take, if we just look at their net income here, it kind of goes along with their acquisition. So their free cash flow, it drops down for an acquisition. And then it picks right back up because they acquired someone and it brought them quite a bit of revenue and net income. And then they acquired something else and that looks pretty decent. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that one in there as well because that looks 
it's responsible here. We have a positive one, net income positive 228% over the last 10 years. Their net, their free cash flow is positive and their revenue is positive, so it looks good as well. Sunoco, their free cash flow is down, but their net income and their free and their revenue is positive. So, Sunoco, they are a furnish, uh, furniture company. I, I believe they, they um, it's either paper or furniture. They do pretty good stuff. So I'm gonna leave them as well, and that looks good. And we have some negative net income and free cash flow so we're actually left with six decent looking stocks here so without diving too much further into them all we have Johnson & Johnson we have Kellogg's actually I guess we could take a look at the price and the yield right now and see just over the year where are they currently sitting at price to yield so right now Johnson & Johnson over the last year it currently has a higher yield than price, which would mean it could be considered undervalued at this time. The last time you would have been able to buy Johnson & Johnson at this price would have been back in 2017, right around you know mid mid June area. You would have been able to buy this at a 2.54% yield and around $130 price. So this one, Johnson & Johnson, could be considered currently undervalued at this time just due to the correction that took place. It may be trying to get its roots back. It also may have taken a dive due to earnings. So uh, definitely take a look into that one. Kellogg's looks like right now it's, you know, its price is over the yield, but it is averaged out. You can see that there were times when you could have bought the stock at nearly a 3.6% yield, whereas now it is trading at around a 3% yield we have Dominion Energy. You're getting this at the highest yield in the last, you know, I don't think, it doesn't look like it's ever been at a 4% yield. Okay, so it has. Back in 2013, this stock, it did drop here for a minute, and that was about the last time you could have got it for a yield of 4%. So the last time you could have bought Dominion Energy it was back in 2013. There was a little dip here where the price fell down and the yield shot up above a 4%, but then that stock has just been on the up and up. You can see here during the 2008 uh, cr crash that took place, the stock did come down, but then uh, after around 2013, it looks like it recovered. So within five, four to five year period, it did recover the price loss and then continue up. Same with Kellogg's here, you can see here, 2008 correction only affected them for around two years, and then they begin to trade sideways and then have been positive since then. Johnson & Johnson, 2008 correction, it phased them a little bit, you would have still got paid out dividends, doesn't look like you would have made your return positive until 2013. Uh, we have Next Era Energy here, so over the year here, they are trading a price above yield, so they could be overvalued at this current time. But over the last 10 years, you can see here that they did fall during the 2008 recession. Then they didn't hit back at their price point to around uh, midpoint 2012, almost 2013, but then have been on a nice steady increase since then. We have Sunoco. For this current time that they're trading, they are trading at a yield above price. So the last time you would be able to buy them with a yield above three would have been back in August, September of 2017. So during after you know after October, they took off. They actually went up into the 55, 56 dollar range. They did come down as they are you know uh, currently trading at a $49.11 and the yield over three. So over the last 10 years, if you had bought this stock during, you know, prior to the correction, you would have dipped and then you would have recovered sometime in 2011. So that would have been about a three year period where you would have had to just buy and hold and average down on your loss until it picked back up. And then, you know, everything dipped right in this time frame again. But then if you, you know, if you hold it for the long term, more than likely, you would come out positive just in the long term. Uh, short term, MGEE yield is at a 2.3, which is one of the highest yields you would have been able to buy this since 2016, about mid-year, is when this stock was at around a 2.3. 
priced around a $48 point and now they've had some dividend increases you know a lot of these stocks here they do increase their dividend year over year and uh, this is just one of them we can actually take a quick look uh, no we won't do that I guess we could do the how long they've been paying out dividends very quickly here so first one here is Johnson & Johnson followed right behind by Kellogg's and then we have ticker symbol D then we have ticker symbol NEE -E. then we have Sonata, Sonoco and then MGEE -E. so Johnson & Johnson dividends for 55 years there great looking stock Kellogg's for 13 years Dominion Energy, this is the electric company, they've been paying out dividends for nine years. So a lot of things you have to take a look at, payout ratios, 41%, which is pretty low. Dividend growth has been very nice. Kellogg's payout ratio under 60%, dividend growth over 10 years, so they've paid out during recessions. Uh, Dominion Resource, they cut their dividend or pulled it back in 2009. They are paying out over 60%, but they're a utilities company. We have Next Era Energy, dividend growth for the last eight years since 2010, so they may have cut it or halted it. And then they are, do they have a payout ratio less than 60? So NOCO, they have a payout ratio less than 60, which is pretty nice. They have been paying out dividends for 37 years. And then we have MGE Energy, which is at 42 years of dividend increases, and then a payout ratio of 56. So pretty good looking companies. So a few of these here. So Johnson & Johnson over 10 years, Kellogg's over 10 years, we have Sonoco over 10 years, and MG Energy over 10 years. So all of those stocks just about, you know, if we remove these four and just went with Johnson & Johnson, Kellogg's, Sonoco, and MGEE, those ones have been paying out during recessions, during multiple recessions. So those would be some of your safest bets. So that is it for this video so again our undervalued ones that are currently you know they look undervalued definitely do a little bit more research would be MGE Sonoco Johnson & Johnson Dominion Energy and that is it so four of those stocks look like they're currently undervalued at this current time just due to the correction that took place so definitely do your own research if you would like to you know get involved in any of those stocks take a look at their 10ks go over their last quarters now what are what are they doing this year what are they going to be doing next year what have they done in the last four or five years and such so that is it for this video if you have enjoyed the video remember to hit the like comment remember to hit the like leave a comment below Remember to subscribe for future financial videos. If you have any questions about what was covered today, I know we went through here pretty quick, just kind of scanning through, looking for some stocks with next dividends next week that had a PE less than 25, yields greater than 2. These all have increasing revenue, net income, and their free cash flow, while it is important, decreasing free cash flow could be that they're doing acquisitions, they're buying other companies, they're acquiring other little small companies so definitely read those 10 ks to see what they've done but everything else looked pretty positive you know they they've all gone through recessions they've all recovered through recessions four of them have paid out dividends for more than 20 years so definitely check those four stocks out johnson and johnson kellogg's sonoco and mgee -E. so thank you guys for watching i will see you next time have a great day bye